Welcome to another episode of VMblog's Expert Interview Series. Today we have with us Scott Anderson, the SVP of Product Management and Business Operations at Couchbase. Scott, welcome. Thank you, David. It's great to be here today. We're glad to have you. So uh, I just want to jump right in. Uh, you guys had a, a, a new product launch, and I'd like to dig into that if we could. Uh, I know one of the key differentiators for Couchbase Cloud is this NVPC BYOC thing. Can you explain why users would want that? Uh, how does it work and why aren't others doing it? Yeah, um, would love to dive into that. Um, so why would a customer want this? And we talk to a lot of our existing customers as well as a lot of prospects who are considering Couchbase. And when we talked about the deployment model for a database as a service, uh, there's two approaches that we've seen in the marketplace. One is which the data plane or where the actual database resides is within the vendor's cloud environment. And the second approach is it's deployed within the customer's virtual private cloud or VNet environment. And the driver for that second option is really around three critical points. One is having control of the data. So having the data reside within the customer's environment uh, versus the vendor's environment. Uh, another one is really around deployment flexibility. The ability to co-locate that application within the same VPC potentially, or within a separate VPC within that customer's overall cloud account. So it's really about providing that flexibility. And then the last one is total cost of ownership. So in talking to a lot of customers, having transparency about what they're buying. So within Couchbase Cloud, when you're purchasing that, you're paying for the underlying Couchbase enterprise server technology, as well as the management capabilities that we provide. Uh, but what we're not providing as part of that service is the underlying infrastructure where that database is running. Um, that is paid for directly by the customer to the cloud service provider. And what that enables a customer to be able to do is to leverage the various pricing models that are available by the cloud provider. So the ability to use hourly pricing if they want or reserved instance pricing that can have a dramatic savings for that customer. Also gives them the flexibility as new pricing models emerge from the cloud providers, the ability for a customer to take advantage of that. So really those three, three key points around control, around deployment flexibility, as well as total cost of ownership. Um, the next question you asked was, how does this all work? Right. Um, so the way that we view this is, there's two components to Couchbase Cloud. There's the control plane, which is our multi-tenant application, which a customer goes in, logs in. This is where a customer is going to determine uh, the components of the cluster. So what services are gonna run, what EC2 instances they're going to go ahead and use. And it provides all of that management capability. Then the second element is the data plane, and that's what resides within the customer's VPC. This is where we deploy a Kubernetes cluster within that environment and Couchbase. And what we're really managing from that point on is the communication between the control plane and the data plane. So the control plane, uh, you're making changes like, I want to upgrade to the latest version of Couchbase. We're sending those commands down into the data plane, leveraging the Couchbase autonomous operator to instantiate those changes. And then we're communicating metrics and statistics from the data plane back in the control plane, and then we kick off alerts based off of things or just um, uh, graphically representing what the health and status of that cluster is in terms of operations per second, memory utilization, and so forth. Um, the third question you asked there is, why aren't other people doing this? Um, we believe this is actually an emerging best practice. So there are other vendors who provide this type of solution. Uh, most notably, Databricks has been doing this for some time. So when we looked at, when we were building the solution, we had two choices. Um, and we looked at the demand of our customers and what their needs were and potential prospects and felt this was most appropriate for our customer base. And then also having the comfort that this has been done before and it's been uh, done very successfully by companies such as Databricks. And were, I mean, there's a lot uh, in there. Were, were, were these things driven by your existing customers? Were, were these features that they were asking for? Yeah, it really was. It was both our enterprise, large enterprise customers, uh, as well as customers who are new to Couchbase and talking to prospects. And so when we went out to them and said, what sort of databases a service solution do you want? Um, when we looked at those requirements, really, I want control over my data. 
Um, I want to be in control of my cost structure around that and be able to take advantage of things like reserved instance pricing. Um, I don't want an intermediary in that transaction who's margin stacking. Um, and I really want flexibility of deployment. Um, those are the needs that came from our customers in addition to the classic needs of a database as a service. I wanted to be able to get up and running quickly. I want to be able to provide a database endpoint of Couchbase to my developers as quickly as possible. I want global visibility into all my deployments that are managed by a database as a service. Um, but those key uh, requirements around control of my data, uh, the total cost of ownership and flexibility, which led us to this architectural decision that we made. And what kind of uh, you know, security exceptions or rules uh, does it require? Yeah, so we've documented this, David, uh, in our documentation site for Couchbase Cloud, so anybody can go ahead and look at that. But what we are getting is really an access um, into the customer's VPC that allows us to manage resources within that VPC. So what the ability to deploy EC2 instance, EBS, S3, um, and that's what that role provides us. And there's complete visibility in terms of what the role that we are, are granted by the customer. It obviously has to be explicitly granted by that customer. And they can see all the communication that's going on between the control plane and the data plane itself. And I know you, uh, you, you just announced a webinar with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Yep. And, th and that's separate from Couchbase Cloud. Yep. Uh, where do you see things in terms of people running on CBC and people going to the Oracle or Amazon marketplaces? Yeah, um, it's really interesting. This Couchbase Cloud is about presenting new options to our customers. So we've been in the marketplace, uh, AWS, as well as Azure, GCP, and, and obviously or OCI. Um, we've announced support for that. And people are using things like our cloud formation templates. Um, and finding that as an easy way to deploy in the public cloud. We believe well over 40% of our clusters are deployed in the public cloud today, and people have classically used uh, the marketplaces uh, as a point of entry um, for you know, their initial use of cash base in public clouds. But with that, there's a choice, which is I want to go ahead and deploy and self-manage those clusters, or I want to leverage Couchbase Cloud because I want Couchbase to bring their years of experience to manage uh, that overall environment. And so it, it's really a matter of choice of, do I want to self-manage or do I want to fully manage databases as a service? We want to create that choice for the customers and this, this announcement of Couchbase Cloud now gives customers that complete choice between self-manage or a, a database as a service. And I'm sure your existing clients will probably be asking this, but, uh, you know, if they already have an existing Couchbase local installation, yes. how difficult is it to move an application to Couchbase Cloud? Yeah, so one of the things that we're really proud of with our initial release is the support of our cross data center replication. Um, and so this is for customers who are natively deploying within Couchbase Cloud, they can set up uh, replication cross regions for things like HADR. But we also support replication from self-managed clusters into Couchbase Cloud. So that makes it relatively easy for a customer to go ahead and set up a persistent or one-time replication stream from their self-managed cluster into Couchbase Cloud. So very efficient and effective way for customers to migrate from self-managed to a Couchbase Cloud. From there, it's about reconnecting your application to that new database endpoint that is running within Couchbase Cloud. We also have services from our consulting organization to assist customers who have existing self-managed deployments to easily to, to migrate into Couchbase Cloud. That's good, that's important. Yep. And uh, do you have any plans to deploy Couchbase Cloud beyond the top three cloud providers? Yeah, it's one of the things that we talk about, obviously, with our field teams and customers. Our priority right now is we're launched, obviously, within AWS to extend that into Azure and GCP throughout this year. And then we'll constantly evaluate based off of market demand, both of our existing customers and prospects. Um, there's some things, you know, obviously, regionally specific clouds in Asia Pac. Uh, as well as in Europe, um, there's some emerging trends going on there. So we'll continue to assess that. And really based off of market demand, we'll make those determinations in terms of what clouds we support in the future beyond the three that I mentioned previously. And then uh, can you go into a little bit of detail about how uh, the hybrid functionality works? You know, if, yeah. if I'm local with some workloads 
and cloud with others. How, do, how does that work? Yeah, so it's really using cross data center replication, which is one of the key features uh, within Couchbase Enterprise Server. It's a feature that our customers absolutely love. So when we think about hybrid, there's a number of scenarios that we see people using this. Uh, so one could be I've got self-managed clusters on-prem and I want to run prod there. Um, but what I may want to do is use XDCR to replicate that data into Couchbase Cloud and spin up dev or test clusters, where I may use them for a day, for a week, for a month, for different purposes. The other scenario that we see in talking to customers is many customers have had self-managed uh, where they have a primary data center and a secondary da data center for their DR capabilities. Uh, in talking to customers, a number of them are looking at, you know what, we want to run prod self-managed, but what we would like is to have our DR um, site set up within Couchbase Cloud. So using cross data center replication uh, is a great tool to enable that, where they self-manage prod, maybe their DR site is running within Couchbase Cloud. Um, XDCR, we've announced a number of capabilities recently in terms of filtering, so the ability to filter data, uh, so only specific data elements are moving from one region to another from a GDPR compliance perspective, as well as the ability to prioritize those replication streams based off of a quality of service objective that each customer has. And then with, with being, you know, on three, the three major cloud platforms, is it possible uh, for users uh, who are managing, you know, AWS, Google, Azure, Couchbase instances, uh, one management console, or are they going to, you know, need something for each one? Yeah, so as we, you know, we're on AWS today as we extend support to the other clouds. Um, as part of Couchbase Cloud, you have that single pane of management, and that's irrespective of if I've got clusters running in one cloud in multiple regions, uh, under different projects, you'll have visibility to that. And to answer your question specifically, if you're running in multiple clouds, you'll get complete visibility from our control plane, irrespective of where uh, those clusters are being deployed. So truly a single pane of glass management, irrespective of which public cloud provider you're using, what regions those clusters are running in, what DPCs are being at. Now, the who gets visibility to that is, is obviously controlled by the user in terms of uh, role-based access control, in terms of who gets that global visibility or just visibility to a specific cluster or set of clusters. Well, great. Well, uh, Scott, I appreciate all the information on, on your new product launch. Uh, before I let you go, I wanted to check and see where is the best place for VM blog viewers to go to find out more information about, uh, you know, what we've talked about. And is there anything online, uh, demos or uh, trials that people can use uh, to actually, you know, get their hands dirty and try this out? Yeah, absolutely, David. So anybody, all the viewers can go to Couchbase.com and under products, they can select Couchbase Cloud. Uh, at that web page, there's a ton of information. There's a getting started video. There's an overview video, data sheets, FAQs, and so forth. And most importantly, there's a link to request a free trial. Uh, so it's a 30-day free trial to use uh, the management capability in Couchbase Enterprise users. So I encourage all of you to go there, uh, get more information, uh, and request a free trial account. Well, great. Well, thanks again. We appreciate your time and uh, sharing your thoughts and letting us all know uh, what you guys are up to. Thank you uh, very much, David, for the opportunity today and look forward to uh, giving you updates in the future as we continue to extend the capabilities. Absolutely, look forward to it. Thanks so much.